let us briefly, I just want to briefly talk about the term when we say student teachers. And let us say like this, when we are reading we, and studying, we are occupying the seat of a student, uploading knowledge or information. Relaying what we have learned, we are then downloading and thus sit in the seat of a teacher. And the person to whom we are teaching becomes the student uploading. So it is a continuous system of uploading and downloading. When we're reading or when you're studying, we are uploading, we are teaching, we are downloading. And the person who we are teaching to, they are uploading. And they, in turn, when they are teaching, they become the teacher downloading. And the person who they download it to, they become the student. So it's a continuous upload, download, upload, download. Okay. And the more we download, the more we teach, the more we can receive more information, information, and we can upload more. So it's a in pouring and an outpouring simultaneously, or as it relates to me, you not know, like the infinity symbol, like number eight sideways. It's like that. We are continuously uploading and downloading, uploading, downloading. So that basically means that we are we sit in the seat of a student and a teacher. We sit in the seat of a student as a student more than we sit in the seat of a teacher because we are here in the physical realm as students for us to learn. We learn by way of our experiences, directly or indirectly. That means that everybody we meet is really potentially our teacher, because we learn from the young as well as the old, from the living as well as the dead. Hold on. Okay. And because Wolstabad is a living entity, we then become endowed with outformation being transformed into information. And since Wolstabad is a living entity, it must be lived by way of our souls or our practices. And in order for its precept to be settled into the crevices of our brain as natural ether energy and into our hearts emanating inward, outward. So being it's alive, in order for anything to be alive, there's got to have movement to follow. And this Wolstabat is what we refer to as Ha Madad Ad. Empanadalu, the, the divine words coming by way of the master teacher, or he says through him, by way of the pa or zaku, the Christians, who pa mundaru, uh, the overseers. Okay? So it's a continual process of uploading, downloading, uploading, downloading, student, teacher. Okay? And when we say when this when Rusobat enters our brain, we have to uh, let me just differentially say something here. Rusobat is the culture and the doctrine what we is what gives the culture its authenticity. It is the, the, the doctrine is the foundation. And if the doctrine is weak or lacks validity, that means the foundation upon which the culture rests upon will not last the test of time. And when we say culture or Wulstaba or Wunawa is the spiritual science and universal knowledge of Nagara Nadu Negroes, wherever we must be wearing where we may be on the planet, it is all encompassing. Our culture, our culture is all encompassing, as we said many times, and our culture, our culture is our means, or our culture is our means of identification. Mm -hmm. If you do not have a culture, that means you do not have an identity. 
That means, who are you? This is, we say this, and we say that the culture is all encompassing. What we mean is, it is inclusive, especially in terms of our deities and our esoteric or exoteric practices. You follow? When we say deities, we would, for lack of a better word, we would say religion. Uh, we use the word religion loosely, but in our tongue, we would we use the word za'am or za'am at. Hey, that za'am at. That means opinions. And we, we do not live by way of opinions, we live by way of sound, right reasoning. Okay, by way of right knowledge, the right wisdom, and the right understanding that leads to a right overstanding on into sound right reasoning for our spiritual science and universal knowledge wu sabat. Okay. And we we, uh, we know that reasoning is the highest form of mental processing because reasoning is in itself a living entity. Okay. So we should not embrace a religion that's not created by one of us for us. Let's say by one of us, I'm talking about us sent down by way of our overseas or our deities. We should be able to, our deities should look in our image and after our lightning, meaning our deities look like us and they act like us. And they created us in their image and after our after they created us in their image and after their likeness. And being we are nine ether beings, we are imbued with those nine ether creative forces of natural nature. And we can go into that later on and our connection as ethereums to those beings. Okay. Right. Uh, let's not think, have a briefly talk about Parnababhyananam as well, the master teacher. And he, as an outstructor who has incarnated to raise up other outstructors like himself. And when we say he possesses 300 and, or 720 degrees, we mean he has 306 degrees of outerlect and 306 degrees of intellect. When we say outerlect, or, or 306 degrees of affirmation and 306 degrees of information. When we say outlet and intellect or information or affirmation, we say affirmation coming outside of this dimension and being transformed into this dimension as information and intellect. Okay. And he is given he is given us the keys to unlock the doors to open that way, part torok. So that we too can have or make that connection to Pa'ut, Pa, Kale, Makwana, the Omniverse, so we too can receive the higher affirmation or the higher or receive outlet or raise ourselves up to have outlet and thus in turn we become what's referred to as outstructors. He says he wants to, he is raising up outstructors are not instructors. But as we know, before we, become, we can become an outstructor, we have to take the step as a, of a student, then become instructed, become outstructed, and from being instructed, we elevate, become instructors ourselves, and, we, and then as we elevate to, be, to receive outformation from an outstructor, we too will elevate to the degree of an outstructor. You see the few steps? Okay. Before we continue, any questions, comments, or not for you, brother? Oh, okay, yeah, brother. Okay, no. can you step to the mic, bro? To the mic, to the mic yes, have you oh, run it in, bro? Oh, you um, pull the mic, let the mic come to you. Oh, yeah, let's go to the mic. Just to explain the meaning of double unk. The, 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 the unk tree, yeah. 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 Uh, we know that the unk uh, represents the key to eternal life, but the unk, we call it the unk tree, tree means two, is representative of the double resurrection, meaning that 
uh, from 1970 to the year 2000 was the first resurrection. And from, from the mentally dead, a, the Pana Babianana had to walk us through the schools of religion up he had 30 years from 1970 to year 2000 AD to give us what we wanted, which is to raise us up to that degree uh, to the point from 2000 AD onwards for the second resurrection, mm -hmm. or we call it the Ankh Tui. Okay, so there's many symbolism behind the Ankh Tui. A lot of people have never ever seen the Ankh Tui. Why? Because it is the day and time. And we, because of who and what we are, or who and what Pana Babianan is, we have that right, mm -hmm. that divine right to um, material, to materialize whatever symbols we deem that represents us as, uh, as a nation, uh, as a people. So to us, as also about the double unk you see there is represented of that, the double resurrection. Okay, the double mental resurrection on into our path towards deity ship or what they refer to as godhood. Okay, so we have a lot of um, symbols. So, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Cool. Right. As you say, as we say, we use the term pa nabab yanun. The nabab means master or a amun bab or one who is of the masters. And as a Mun Bab, as a one who is of the master, uh, when we say master, we talk about galactical master, because there are many people out there in the conscious community, they call their teacher the master teacher, but the teacher himself does not refer to himself as the master teacher, because they, they do know who the real and true and living master teacher is right now walking amongst us. As a Mun Bab, or Mun Bab U, as one of the masters, his job here is to raise up Mun Bab Tat U, feminines, to be masters, to be just like himself, Wu Mun Bab U, and the masculine. Okay. My question is that when people come or people come into Wusaba, um, people who don't understand the culture and um, actually they want to raise their vibration to that higher consciousness, which our master teacher is teaching us to, is there a practical way to do it? Or is it by just reading the books? And I know doing it yourself, but how can they actually do it? Right, good question. Right, when you say, is there a practical way uh, to raise your vibration? When you talk about raise your vibration, you're talking now in terms of tones, frequencies, and vibration, okay? So like we did earlier on, the chant, R -E -U, that chant, is or the they say that it's the vowels r e u is the vowels they say that there are five vowels a e i o u but really there's only three r e u and the vowels you find is, is congruent in most not every language but most languages the vowels are the basis of a language now you notice we, we say r e u or in english they'll say a e o and you know we say it's we use the, the term AEO as the ancient Egyptian order. And that is letting you know the, uh, the origin of language. That's where it's come from, from the ancient Egyptian mysteries. So there's a, so now these are the practices, AEO, that's the basic foundational chart, or to the uh, foundational tones, frequencies, and vibration. Then all the other charts you will see uh, you will find when you practice them, these aid in raising your vibrations as well. Because when you are when you are saying different tones, or let's say, yeah, yeah, the mere fact that we are used, these are like music, and each letter, this is the word haruf in our Lahad language, Mispatia, each letter is like an unto a note on the piano keys. Okay, so when you say, uh, 
Pons moon. That alone is a tone, frequencies, and vibration that would re resonate in your brain or within the cavities of the brain. Uh, and it will also resonate more importantly with the heart chakra. We can go into this, but we have already done a class on heart size. Go ahead. So, and thank you for that one. Um, the other thing uh, I want to say is that in my own personal language, yeah, like what you just said now, the, uh, the what you just said. Now, <laughs> <the vibration. laughs> yeah. now, in my language, when I was growing up, I was taught by my grandmother these tunes, which is, ah, eh, Yeah. Uh, this was her teaching me then. Okay. Yeah. Another question I want to ask is that um how do we reach out to more people? Right. Okay, because we from what I can gather is that most about is the future. And for us, nine eater being, we ain't got no time to waste. 100%. We need to move fast as soon as possible so how do we reach out to everyone out there as quickly as we can right yeah what it is is um it's really the way to reach out to people is propagation that's it we have a lot of work to do yeah we do have a lot of work to do it's propagation talking to family friends you know those who it's like this we propagate to anybody regardless of Race, race. That's what to those who have a, a, a listening ear, I mean, regardless of race, and means you know, regardless of what an individual looks like. But what I do, my experience is what I do. I throw some jewels out, and I talk to people, and to see if they can pick up the jewels. No matter, no matter, no matter what jewel, how even just one little little um, diamond, they pick it up. You know. But that's the only way you can reach people is by way of propagation. You could be on the bus, shopping, or your family have a little conversation, and you're propagating to them. Here it is. You're downloading. Today. Oh, go ahead, the young, young master. What does, um, what does propagation mean? Oh, yeah. When we say propagation, that means you're spreading uh, the news mm -hmm. or, or the message. Yeah, you're spreading the message. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when we are watching television or we go to cinemas or whatever, we are uh, we are constantly being propagated to, or a message is constantly being said to us all, whether we are aware of it or not, and it has an effect on our conscious and subconscious mind, and and has an effect on our thoughts. And anything that has an effect on our thoughts has an effect on our actions, meaning the direction we will go in. Okay, because they say thought precedes action. Well, so a person can propagate wrong knowledge or trick knowledge, and based upon what we receive, and we assimilate consciously and subconsciously. It permits into our being, and we would walk a certain path. However, propagation of right knowledge also has the same effect. But when you have, when we are propagated with nine ether affirmation, it is transforming us from not from just mere mortals into deities. I follow. So, good question. What is propagation? It means the um, the delivery of a message. You follow. Um, any more questions, comments, or uh, uh, observations? The question I want to ask is that we have uh, people already who have higher vibration, higher consciousness, which are being taught. They are naturally born like this. Okay, and if they come into Warsaw, how do you help them? to control 
what they have. Right. Um, the, the knowledge itself, uh, the doctrine of the knowledge uh, is what is the science. When we said Wolstabat is our spiritual science and universal knowledge, it's the science behind our practices. You see, I remember one brother said it on uh, I think it was Facebook, I listened to some time back. He said, uh, if you don't have the knowledge or the science behind your practices, you even as most Marku Sebians, you we fall into the, the, the realm or that group of religiosity. We become religious. We do religious practices without the science behind or the purpose or the reason why we are doing this. The reason why we're doing this is because of such and such and such and such. So once we know the science, it will help uh, accelerate our development. Okay. So basically, these are people who are born naturally with these gifts. Yeah. So when they come into Wusabad, they can actually acquire more knowledge to control their vibrations and their powers. Yeah, what it is is that we have to um, understand or understand is that it's really controlled by higher beings, by Ethereans. We yeah. use the word more uh, uh, Ethereans. They're the ones who actually control it. But there are people who are born, you're 100% right, who are, um, who are born and they have high knowledge. But again, to increase your knowledge or to what we say, we in order to accommodate more out formation or to upload more, you have to download. Yeah. You see? That, that's, um, so that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll your question. Zamal, sorry, we have a few questions on Zoom. Oh, go ahead. Questions on okay. Zoom. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Right. So this one is from Earl. Um, I want to know about what the Palladians because they were eaten by another alien species so that they had to make something for that alien species to eat. My question is why are, I want to know about why the Palladians could not defend themselves and fight and are they a good species of alien species? us nine ether beings to interact with to use their energy for spiritual healing sorry it, it's a bit well, yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. Uh, but, okay yeah. fair question yes mm -hmm. uh it was, uh, it was the reptilians who were um attacking the who were under the uh, the platians were under the control of the reptilians the reptilians were eating them out and in order to uh, avert that they decided to create uh, Adamite in their in the image in their image and after their likeness, uh, so that and disease. So when the when the reptilians eat them, it will, it will the objective was so that the reptilians eat them, eat these Adamites, they become food. So that the uh, and because they were diseased, that they would die off. But guess what? It just it's like adding flavor into the food. So <laughs> so you know and. Um, so the the uh, reptilians were more powerful than the um, Pleiadians. Now, when the question is asked, is uh, should we are they agreeable or disagreeable? Agreeable to who and disagreeable to whom? And we should not engage in those practices because the master teacher gave us a description of the Pleiadians as being the tall blondes, uh, blonde for uh, pale skin, fang-like teeth. And who couldn't withstand the sun? So he said. So their practices uh, is not something that is conducive to us as nine ether beings. In actuality, any practice that's not nine of nine ether origin is not really conducive to our upliftment. Not to say we cannot learn from it, but certain practice we should we should follow something that was sent down by way of one of us. For all of us, okay, there's nothing wrong in doing research. But me myself, I won't. I won't even go to a Buddhist, Buddhist thing. To you know, good to go and learn, hear what they're saying, you know. But these practices are not for us. The religious practices of monotheism 
Abrahamism, Mosesism, and Jesusism, or uh, sorry, and Mohammedism, these are practices that is not to our means of liberation and or salvation. Thus, we don't need it. It was good for that moment in time, but we don't need it. Not to say that just because a person is religious, just because a Nagaru is practicing Hinduism or Buddhism makes them a bad person, it doesn't. Just because a person is a Sabian does not make them a good person, it doesn't. It's an individual's actions that determine what that whether they are agreeable and or disagreeable. Follow? However, within each of us, we do have the agreeable and disagreeable nature. And when we say Ashok, we've got to, re we've got to acknowledge that Ashok does not mean you have to be kind, caring. No, you, don't, you have to be like a doormat so people can walk over you. Sometimes you have to exercise that disagreeable nature in order towards their, that individual's development. You follow? Go ahead, Uncle. I'm going to ask you a uh, very young um, man who is kind of uh, aware of you talking about uh, Mohammedism and other major religion, Christianity, as opposed to Sabians. Right. So I basically uh, have an idea what the three major religions are saying. But I want to just kind of uh, give me an outline Sabian versus give me uh like a comparison that we they believe that we don't believe that or they whatever or just give me a difference basic for my enlightenment yeah totally to, uh, very good um right what it is is that the deities uh of the abrahamic religion Mosesism, Jesusism, and Mohammedism the deities who they are propagating who they are worshiping or giving their angels to they don't know that these are carnivores or carnivorous beings or, or carnivores. They're there for human meat. They're there to eat humans. See, so all, all that's happening is that uh, they're being fattened for the kill. The energies... The, okay, also, when you talk about monotheism, it was not sent for us. Nothing, nothing takes place in Africa. The only time you hear mention of Africa is when God, when God told, told, his, told his chosen, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad to come to, to Africa, Egypt. Remember, Egypt's in Africa. You know, people don't think you know, Egypt is just in, it's put near, it's near, it's somewhere in the Middle East. No, Egypt is in Africa. So when stuff hits the fan, when God cannot um, uh, give sustenance to his chosen people, he says to them, go to Africa. Let's say Egypt to be safe there until in baby Jesus' time. When Pharaoh, when Pharaoh dies or when Herod dies, then you know, send him back to, to um, Israel or wherever it is it comes from. You see, so the difference is it's a fact that the energies that uh, when we, when we pray to Yahweh, God, or Allah, these are not these are not nine ether forces who we are giving our energies to and receiving back those nine ether forces. These are what we refer to as six ether slash ghost stational energies that has that's not to our means of liberation and or salvation. Now, again, just because a person is in one of these three monotheistic religions does not make them a bad person. They will eventually come to Wolf Sabbath. Yeah. What's going to what is happening though from the year 2080 until now? The forces, those six ether and ghost stational forces, are dissipating fast. Nine ether is terminating the atmosphere and it won't last. They will, they will cease to exist. And nine ether forces will permeate the atmosphere. Hinduism should be there. Buddhism should be there. But none of these monotheism, monotheism won't exist. As we know, won't exist. The forces that propagate them will cease to exist. We know 
life force for them to subsist. Right. Um, <clears throat> hope that answers the question, Uncle, young, young master. To my... When you say that there'll be no life force for them to exist, could you elaborate, please? Yeah, when you uh, when we are praying, uh, when you are praying, uh, say in the churches and in the mosques and synagogues, when you are praying, you are giving energies to those forces um, within the atmosphere, those lower forces within the atmosphere, and uh, what we are doing is, in essence, that these forces are being used against our upliftment. Mm -hmm. When the forces start to disappear within the atmosphere and night ether takes over, it will change the mindset of the people. Mm -hmm. And as nine, as these forces within the atmosphere starts to permeate, we start to breathe in these forces, we will change our thoughts, our thinking, and our actions. We'll be doing things that is more conducive to our benefit and our upliftment, or we use the word liberation and salvation. When we say liberation, we mean being free from those of course opposing forces, whatever they may be. And we use the word salvation, we mean keeping those forces away once a person or a people has been liberated. And the master says that the new set of teachers will be prophets and saviors and instructors. So I hope that helps young master. Mm -hmm. cool. oh, what I wanted to add is that um, Wusabat is the future. And from what I've seen so far, all this uh, religious um, ethics everywhere is fading away. And the other thing is that even in Africa, where it is so common with all this, mm. is also fading away, which is where we need to take Wusa back to. Because uh, we are not eater beings. Uh, being a not eater being is that you, nine is the highest number. Okay, they might say 10, but that's a double number, but nine is the highest. So we have to sort of like, get the message out there to our people, especially back in Africa. So I encourage everyone, if you've got families here, even back in Africa, we need to start sending the message as fast as we can. Yeah, uh, it's gonna happen. It is an inevitability. Pilot Babi Nano says he has never lost a battle. And he will never lose. Never lost, it is an inevitability. We will be ready. That is an inevitability. That's it. Okay. We'll step back to the world. That's right. It, it, it will. It will. It, it's it's going to reach. Um, for lack of a better word, don't believe me. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> uh, so I just want to go back to the class title, the art and science. So that meant that, that's a long introduction. That was about forty-five minutes. Okay. The art and science. <laughs> the art and science to the release of Pa. Oh, sorry, uh, Dr. Malika Zika York, the ultimate reality to the Sabians. Now, the question I have here, have we been walking in the wrong direction for the last 22 years? Have we, been, have we been focusing on the external, not the internal? Meaning, our lack of cooperation as opposed to co uh, cooperation? Is a shift in consciousness or awareness required? Meaning, if we keep doing the same thing day in, day out, and expect a different result, isn't that what's referred to as the ingredients to insanity? This is what this class is about. The master said this. Let me read, read something here. My brother, extra terrestrial. The book that the master's sister wrote. I'm looking at page 
One, two, oh, right here. Uh, you know, sister, you like to read it. Uh, the reason why I asked the sister to read is because they were they had language first before math. People read um, page. If you could read page. Um, if you could read page um, Page, uh, yeah, one to nine, question one, please. Question one. Uh, page 129, question one. You were speaking about liberation, but you're confined to a prison. How is that good? Could you continue? Answer. All Nagaru Negroids are confined with me. They just don't know it yet. Our Salau race is confined in a prison of alien religions and or culture and buried in a grave of adverse ignorance. Stop there. Right. Question. You were speaking about liberation, but you're confined to a prison. How is that good? And we said that liberation, we have liberation and we have salvation. Liberation means being, being freed uh, from those opposing forces of nature. And we said salvation is keeping those opposing forces of nature once a people has been liberated. But the question is, um, how can you be speaking about liberation when you're confined to a prison? How is that good? All Nagara Nadu are confined with me. They just don't know it yet. Meaning, we think that we are free, but really, we are in just as much a prison as Pana Babianon. In actuality, we are in we are incarcerated more than he is. We just don't realize it. He has to, he know he can get out. But do we have the formula to get out of the prison that we're in? The prison is mental prison. And he's got here. Our race is confined in the prison of alien religions. That what's saying is we are imprisoned by the mere foreign of these religions that are foreign to us. Thus, we need rules about. And buried, oh, so let's go here. Our Salal race is confined in the prison of alien religions and or culture. So we are foreign, a culture that is alien or foreign to us, taking on practices that is imprisoning our abilities and capabilities. You follow? And it's what I'm buried in a grave of adverse ignorance, ignoring the facts. Can we question two, please, Stamata? I hope that's clear. Go ahead. Question two. You mean when you're free, we all will be free? Answer. Yes, that is the actual fact. And this alone is enough to keep our people in captivity to enemy forces, allowing them to keep abusing those who come to help liberate our race. Right, let's quickly break that down. This is what we do. We have to break down each sentence, word, letter, so we get a full understanding. Okay. You mean when when you when you're free, you all will be free. That is an actual fact. We have in order for us to free the master, we have to start working for of and by each other, aligning our energy to each other. We first have to align ourselves to our soul. Once we align ourselves to ourselves, we'll talk about that later on. We then we will align ourselves to each other, and in turn, the mere fact that we are aligning ourselves to each other, the forces of liberation and salvation will free not just us, but the master teacher. The forces of nature will be working towards his and our release or freedom. Okay. Okay. So I'll just so read that again. Yes. So you mean when you are free, you will be free? Yes, that is the actual fact. And this alone, being that we are um, confined in prison to alien religions, is allowing them, those who constructed the, the, these alien religions, to keep abusing those who came to, who come to help liberate our race. So meaning that 
the these forces is actually help propagating those be it the judicial system and the, uh, be it the police and you got those amongst our own. These forces are helping them to help keep us in prisons. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> in prisons. Yeah. <laughs> And it's going to allow them to keep abusing those, in this case, Pandababianadin, who come to help liberate, free our race, free us from uh, those adverse forces. And it's got here, when we speak about liberation, we are talking about freedom from opposing forces that hinder our means to freedom in all directions. Our greatest obstacle towards liberation is ourselves. Once our minds are free, then we will be doing equal and or greater things like other races. So, have we been walking in the wrong direction? For the past 22 years, and the master said it, what will free me is, is love and unity. So, we need to first develop love for self and kin, kind, and once we develop the love for self or and kin, kindred, kind, then the unification, the unification will become automatic. Can someone want to say something? I'll just pick it up on the on the on the book I have a question. Um, in terms of loving ourselves and loving others, do you have any like um guide or practical steps of what we can do on a regular basis in order to evolve into that person? Who loves themselves and other people. Do you know that? I can go into it later on, but the answer is quite simple. We have to focus our attention on our heart. The heart seat is the seat of the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is what connects us to the universal mind. We use the word a kale makwana the omniverse, or you hear the word parut. What connects our heart to our brain, with the brains we to as the conscious mind, is the vagus nerve. We have 12 cranial nerves. The 10th and the longest is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is what connects the conscious or the subconscious to the conscious, and it runs right down to the heart, see, and the other internal organs around here. Okay, I call it the viscera, the stomach, the solar plexus, etc., etc. So, the simple practice to do is every day to focus on your heart, to focus your attention on your heart. That's it. You know, and it's that simple. That's right. What it is, did you know that the heart, we did a class on this whenever it was, the heart center, the energy or the electromagnetic energy that emits from the heart is more powerful than that that emits from the brain. Do you know that just beneath the heart, we've got the solar plexus or where our internal sun heat gene lies? You follow? So all you have to do is connect yourself to yourself but where of your heart. Now I just want to read something in the Babel. Uh, has anyone got but uh, let me see if I could find it. Um let me see if I could find a quote, a Babel quote, Genesis chapter six. I could find it. Genesis chapter six, I think it's around about uh I've got it here. Look at Genesis chapter six. Reading Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. Genesis 6, verse 5 to 6. And it reads this. Again, we get somewhere about the heart. I think we read it before in many classes, but again. This one, okay, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 reads, And God, Elohim, saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So in this particular quote, it is associating imagination and thoughts with the heart, with this heart scene. So what that is saying then is that when we want to do any visualization 
practices, we should focus our attention on our heart theme. And it's got here, it's got here, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So thinking has also been associated with this heart theme. Okay, so when we are chanting, we should be focusing our attention on this heart theme and the, res the resonation of that chart would emanate greatly. Uh, it would, it, the aura, the, the scientific term I use for that is the toroidal field. We talked about this a lot of time, but I said it many times anyway. We, we have a field, an energy field around us. We use the word hollow aura, or they call it a toroidal field. And it gets strengthened when we focus our attention on this heart seat. When we are breathing, we should focus our attention on this heart seat. When we are thinking, we should focus our attention on this heart seat. The power lies within our heart seat. And from that, we would emanate divine love. That's why Pana, when people say when they are in the presence of Parnabhadi Ananan, there's an energy that he radiates outward. And when they walk, he goes that when in his midst, people never got sick. The mere fact of this emanation from this heart seat. Go ahead, Uncle. Listening to you talking about the heartbeat. You know, I spent a lot of time recently thinking about the heartbeat. You have not said anything that I disagree with. But I'm trying to reiterate her substantially what you've said, wherein I found out that with the heartbeat that you're talking about, the heartbeat, I found out that just to change your everyday pattern, just do something different with your mind and body, if you just remember that the same way we breathe in, if we just learn to practice to breathe out the same way, I mean, the same frequency, i.e., same way you in, the same way you out, trust me, you'll find your mental process changes. Just remember, as you breathe in, so you breathe out. Although you were discussing and saying the same thing, I just thought I will intervene and just remind people the same way you breathe in, the same way you breathe out, and everything changes around you because you're in touch with the frequency of the currents by breathing in the same way you breathe out. Yeah, part time now. Yeah, you want to the same line? When we are breathing, the same principle applies. Breathing in, Breathing out, and we should focus at again our breathing with that heart seat because the breathing also will help strengthen our oratic shell. You follow just by breathing. What it is is that for like this our aura, the reason why we get sick a lot is because we have perforations in our aura, we have holes like a sieve in our aura, and the breathing, all these spiritual practices will help reconnect or re knit our energy field, and we won't get sick. And um, we breathe every day. We don't breathe. You don't breathe. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't breathe, bro. Okay. I just wanted to add something to what you were saying because some people find it very hard to do this uh, heart connection because the heart itself uh, doesn't like when you try to control it and a lot of people find it hard because their heart is the doorway to our life is hidden is a hidden gem inside of us so um they might want to meditate or do something or try to pray in that um time their heart seems to take them somewhere else because they start to think different thoughts, different things, 
although they are still praying with them, yeah, but because the heart does not like to be controlled, this is another aspect that we need to learn or teach our people how to control the heart because it's a doorway, because out of the abundance of the heart, the master speaks. And we need to guide the hearts with all diligence. If I have to love my sister, it comes from my heart. If I want to speak to you, it comes from my heart. If I have to say anything, I have to think the words before I project it out. So everything comes from the heart. So we need to try to teach our people how to guide the heart into the frequency which they need to be. Yeah, well done. Um, hundred percent right on that. Um, what it is though? It's the mind that doesn't like to be controlled, or the thoughts, not the mind. The thoughts, our thoughts, don't like to be controlled, and that demands. Oh, I don't use the word demands, but a lot of practice needs to be done to that. Um, there's an exercise that I did rec I did the uh, I do suggest is that say to yourself, what am I thinking next? Or what's what's my next thought gonna be? What am I thinking next? What's my next thought gonna be? And if you could do that for one minute, I say, yeah, you're on your way. Because that because you may be because you what you want to do is corral the mind, focus your attention on the mind or your thoughts, really your thoughts. And the thoughts, you know, little things will creep in through the back door. You may, may hear a noise, you know, thoughts will creep in uh, to distract your attention from the mind however, or you know, distract your, your attention on your thoughts. However, it must be gently guided to its center once again. So it does demand practice. Uh, but what 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 is helpful is to focus your attention on this heart seat. You know when you're reading the heart, because this is a source of um, assimilation, uh, absorption. We could absorb a lot of information, information of this area of our body, and we could send out teach I don't know what to use we can emanate the knowledge or whatever it is or emotions etc etc from by way of this heart seat okay you're right it is the gem and where's the gem place right inside here the heart seat okay and go ahead young master is there a direct correlation towards how you breathe and how you think as you were speaking earlier about um breathing and your actions yeah the correlation is have you noticed that if a person is in a distressed state say take that now let's say you even face that take time take, that's breathing breathe out take take 10 deep breaths when a woman's pregnant or well, she's giving delivery breathing control breathing breathe out breathing breathe out if you want to be able to control your breathing what can you not do all athletes when they're running they 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 train to control the breathing. Why? They may not know it, but the energy is within the breath. Now, when we are breathing in, we're not just breathing in air, but we're breathing in another, we're not just breathing in oxygen, there is an etheric particle to the oxygen that we're breathing in, and it's called the hen. The life force, this, the oxygen on the periodic table is O8. On the etheric chart is E8. So the ethereum is the etheric counterpart or the non-physical counterpart to the oxygen that we are breathing in. So we are also breathing in that sikhem. And it is recommended that especially after it has rained, the negative hydrogen ions that's within the atmosphere is more abundant after rain. And once we are breathing in, once you do that practices after it rains, we're taking in a lot of sikhem. And also, if we're in the green, in the forest, or amongst trees, we're taking it all in. So you're a young master, you're 100% right. There's a correlation between our thoughts and our breathing. You follow? Another young, young master. <laughs> Something that you said earlier is like, 
two or double reincarnations? Like, how do you make uh, two reincarnations? Two, how do you make two reincarnations? Uh, um, what we said was, um, we, we talk about the unk, talk about the unk tree, yeah, uh, double resurrection. Use the word double resurrection. What what the double what that means is, is what you talking about? Yeah, what it means is that we have now uh, raised our intellect intellect up to another whole level. You know, meaning that we are able to do things that the average individual won't be able or not won't be able are not doing you see uh, we are able to take learn more for lack of a better word and because we're able to learn more uh, we're able to do uh, uh, it's like this learn and absorb understand and apply so we'll be able to learn more absorb more understand what we have learned and apply that this is what when we say the double resurrection we pertain it to what we have what the master teacher has given us you know we now elevate our minds to a whole new level you understand that two okay. i think like the two i think you want to put like maybe two the two oh the two yeah so, yeah um, Resurrection. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, what it was uh, is from when we say resurrection, the master teacher put a time frame on it. It was from 1970 to the year 2000. He had to resurrect us, take walk us through the school of religion. As he said, um, be you Jew, Christian, and or Muslim. He had to walk us through that uh, because that's what we wanted. So we had to resurrect us from that, from those alien religion. The reason why you say alien is because it's not for us. Because we thought that that's what we wanted. So you had to, okay, I come, I came giving you what you wanted, religion. So I'm going to walk you through religion. And as he's walking us through religion, he's, he's, he's given us the actual facts as to in religion. He said, no. What he's done is he's got the brush and painted all of them black. The reason for that, because it creates self-esteem inside of us to know that these prophets, these angels, these females in the scriptures look just like you and I. We have to resurrect. So that's the first resurrection. He said, prior to 1970, he said in 1962, 1963, he said, we came giving us what we wanted. Oh, sorry. He came giving us wolves about or wolves up at the time. But was, as he's given us the science, we wanted to be spooked out about Abraham and Moses and Jesus and Muhammad. So he said, well, I'm going to put these books away until the right time, R-I-P-E, arrives. Then I will take them out again. So I said, he, was, he said, I've given 30 years from the year 1970 to the year 2000 to give them what they wanted. The reason why he said 30 years up to year 2000, because that marked the end of the Adamites' dominion on the planet. Because according to their Bible, their Bible, you add their Bible up, it holds us to about 6,000 years. And that 6,000 years was up in year 2000 AD. Okay. And from 2000 uh, AD onwards is what we refer to as the hereafter doctrine. H A. So now we are receiving what he has really come to give us, which is this right knowledge, this right wisdom, this right understanding to be qualified for a right understanding on into our on into sound right reasoning, our spiritual <clears throat> science and universal knowledge. And when we say spiritual science, we're talking about that which can be proven. Why have faith? which cannot be proven when facts can be trusted. Okay? That's why he calls it actual facts. That's the second resurrection. The second that. resurrection, correct, was from 2000, extended. As you said, from the year 1970 to 2000, there was a time frame. For the, year, um, for the hereafter, is there a time frame as well? 
the hereafter infinite mm -hmm. because this is what we are receiving to help us resurrect us uh, for this new cycle uh, there are the circle there are cycles uh, we have what we refer to as a 24,000 year cycle within those 24,000 years is you cut that into quarters into four parts we have four we have two 6,000 year sun cycle and two 6,000 year moon cycle gold cycle and or silver cycle right now the 20 we are in a new 24,000 year sun a new 24,000 year cycle a new 6,000 year sun cycle the up to the year 2000 AD marked the end or the culmination of the moon cycle of ignorance and oppression depression suppression and repression from the year 2000 got in you got honestly oh, officially it's from the year 1970 when the sun cycle started to kick in as the as each second ticks by let me rephrase that as each moment goes by and it, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter it's been it'll become conducive to us as nagar nadu and those who cannot sustain or survive under the atmosphere will cease to exist. The age of Aquarius, that's what they tell me. Yeah. How long is the hair for you? Sorry? How long is the hair for you? The hair for you? Yeah. Hair after. Hair after. Hair after. Hair after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is, yeah, infinite. Um, when you say cease to exist, you mean that to perish? That's yeah. right. Oh, okay. That's right. Dying. That's right. Like, yeah. Happening. It's just natural nature. You know. Interesting. Um, so that, interesting. Go ahead. And that, and, and that is the reason why you see these, um, uh, now these, these uh, um, sort of like intermarrying into our uh, naive uh, sisters, you know, a lot more than before because they are trying to save their race from not dying yes. which is another thing again because connecting with marriages intermarriages and so mm. on and so forth is actually to, to sustain their race as well mm. okay with a naive that they yeah they uh <laughs> they if not the is what the master jesus said no matter what they do no matter what AI they, they put out there, they're not going to win. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're not going to win. Their plans are not going to work out. Um, you see how you said um, about with the sun, us being in a sun cycle and the planet overheating, not overheating, but heating up. Is that in correlation to the government telling us that it's global warming and then we need to slow the planet from heating down? Correct. That's, the, that's part of the trick technology tactics uh, or <laughs> antics because when you say politics you talk about poly tricks and multiple trick technology yeah they say that oh well you know but it's all what they call mind games i'm about to say jedi mind games but no <laughs> it's all about mind games they're playing in our minds it's a natural occurrence anyway it's a natural occurrence anyway um but all you have to do uh, people for the society to believe what you're saying. So they, they come up with the words like saying, oh, it's global warming, it's this and that. But in the real sense, the nature is actually doing what nature is supposed to do at this particular time. Mm -hmm. Correct. So um, just like how you had woolly haired mammoth and you had saber suits, tiger, mm -hmm. dinosaurs, etc., they had their time, they've been extinct. Yeah. And uh, the master says that. When nature says it's time for an animal or species to go, it's time for animal or species to go. And if man was to come in and intervene and prolong the existence of that particular animal on within the atmosphere, all they're doing is poisoning the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But they are of carcassum, the animals, they are of unnatural nature. Nature is not their best friend. Nature is their worst enemy. I mean, nature is our best friend. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Because we are of natural nature. Pa material al patara, natural nature. Okay. Amar, there's a, um, an, a question on Zoom. Is it so? Are the nine ether force forces, nine ether beings, need to need to pray to? Okay, that's a, who we need to pray to. That's a good question. Really, ultimately, we are praying to ourselves. Uh, we are praying to ourselves because within ourselves lies our deities. We are they, and they are us. We pray to those ontological forces that are within our being. Our Muslafu ancestors, Monsabu relatives, Nadarudu overseas, um, are within inside of us, they're in us, they are through us, and they are around us. We are both physical and etheric, we are physical and uh, spiritual, mm -hmm. and they are etheric or spiritual. So we have both sides with us, ether and physical. So we make the connection of our, of our conscious to our subconscious, to the, which connects to the etheric side of our being. We connect to our ancestors or our monsabo relatives who has crossed over by way of our etheric or not or our spiritual being. They are there watching over us. All we need to do is reconnect with them and they will guide us in the many different ways or manners by of inspiration by of actual hearing their voice in our head by dreams the master says we have an array of options at our disposal to utilize for our elevation our inner world i'm going to talk about that in a minute our inner being is more powerful than our outer being however the inner side of us you, relies on the outer world or the conscious mind, or they call it the objective mind to make the connection with the subjective mind for us to elevate. Okay. So once we make the connection, anything and everything that we imagine to do, remember imagination is the heart, we'll be able to do. We will we have what's referred to as unlimited resources we just have to make that we have to be first be aware or be cognizant or be conscious of that actual fact okay so i hope that answers the question so i just want to read this here uh before i say something i want to recommend this book here the master key system and it's by a guy called Charles F. Hannell, the master key system. Charles F. Hannell, uh, how I came across, let's say the, the history of this is that I was on, uh, I think it was Facebook, and one of the brothers was Musmat or Sabian brother. Oh, Charles F. Hannell, you want to take a look? Yeah. Uh, one of the brothers, uh, one of the Sabian, he wrote an excerpt from, from this particular book, and I start reading, I Google it, and it came up. Um, this guy, Charles F. Hannell, this book, The Master Key System, was written in the 1920s. He is a Freemason, it's crossed over by now, he's a Freemason, and you could tell by how it's written that they were taught, the, of, they taught the Egyptian mystery systems, okay? This is pertaining to our science. Or we should say our spiritual science. These are keys he's put inside here. And when you read the scrolls, you're about to see that okay, then even though these are keys, they could only access so much doors. Limited doors. They have limited doors. These keys, as we say, many classes, keys are there to lock or unlock doors. What doors are we talking about? The doors that's within inside of us. Once the doors are unlocked, we are the ones who have to open the door, and we have the ones who are the ones each and every have to walk through the doors that have been opened. So that's Thank enough. You. Welcome. And we need to unlock. We are the ones who have to uh, walk through the doors. 
Now, you've got the, those, let's look at like this, the analogy is, the many, the doctrine, or the doctrine are keys, the doctrine of rules about are keys, and you can have as many books on your bookshelf, as by having keys that's stashed on your bookshelf and not being utilised. You've got the key now, and you unlock the door. It's up to you now to open that door, and it's up to you now to walk through those doors. This is what we have in our possession. Okay. So now, I can read, and this is a, I've been an uh, excerpt. Well, I'm going to read an excerpt from that book later in a minute. In a minute, not now. Right? Okay. Right. So there is what's referred to as reflection and projection. I'm going to talk about that briefly. Remember, this is pertaining to the class title, the art and science behind the release of Dr. Malachi C.K. York, the ultimate reality to the Sebians. And remember that if you read in my brother Excellent Terrestrial, we too are in prison. So we need to, once we acknowledge that, that we are in prison to alien religions and alien cultures, that is not to our advancement. We have to do the, we have to take the necessary steps in order to liberate self. But in order for us to take the necessary steps, we have to be cognizant or aware of the processes that are needed. You follow? Remember, we are, when we are reading, we have to read with awareness and comprehension. We've got to be aware or conscious of what we are reading, and we have to comprehend or have an understanding and or understanding of what we have read. And that's why when we say we are reading something, what does this word mean? The reason why we should look up the words is to help break the spell. Because the master says in the black book that you could you could spell a word or put a, or put a spell on a person, meaning by the spoken word and or the written word is how the spell can be enforced. And conversely, by way of the written word and the spoken word, the spell can be broken. It's up to each of us as an individual and as a collective. Okay, so we talk about reflection and projection. I'm going to read a little excerpt here. We live in two worlds simultaneously, an inner world and an outer world. Our outer world is but a reflection of the projection from the inner world. And we are related to the outer world by way of the objective mind. The brain is the conduit or the channel of the objective world and the cerebral spinal system of nerves puts us in consciously communication with the sensations of the outer world. We are related to the world within by way of our subconscious mind. So the conscious mind is what connects us outside, and the sorry, the conscious mind what connects us outside, and the conscious the subconscious mind what connects us inside. Correct? It's got here. We are related to the world within by way of our subconscious mind and with, with the solar plexus being the organ or the conduit of this mind. The world within is a subjective mind. Remember that we, I just want to read that. Sorry, I'm going to read the text that we What I just read here. Oh, by the way, this particular scroll here, the master key system, if you could go on YouTube and if you tap in the master key system, go on YouTube and you get the 24 lessons in here. You can scroll, you, you get up on YouTube. Tap into the master key system and it will come up and the 24 parts and you can read them at your leisure and pleasure. It's actually the, the book, but in audio, audio form. And you can read them at your leisure and pleasure. But it's good to have the book if you can. Uh, yeah. It's called the master key system. See it? Yeah. You got it? 
To je normálně vyplatné, to je kvůli těm. To je vlastně čím pustím, my to ani nevíčím, že jsem dostal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, my oh, see. Oh, 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 you mean the young young master? Yeah. Like young, it, master. young 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 master. Fifteen years ago. I thought, oh, oh, seems like yesterday. <laughs> you look, you look young. Fifteen now. Oh, 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 big man now. You know, you know, she called the young master. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me quickly go. Okay. <laughs> Well, I want to um, read something to you here, Sam. Yeah, so this book is um, it's worth 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 reading, or purchasing, or not purchase it. You go on YouTube, and and you get all these lessons on there. Okay, that's what I found it. It's got here. I'm going to read the excerpt from here. Um, we read that the cerebral spinal system is an organ of the conscious mind, and the sympathetic and the sympathetic system is the organ of the subconscious mind. The cerebral spinal nerve center is the channel for which we receive conscious perception from the physical senses and exercise control of the movements of the body. This system of nerves has its center in the brain. We have what's referred to as this brain natural ether energy that also connects us to the higher realms as well, body of the brain, okay, which is goes into a whole new class. I don't know if we've done a class on that. The sympathetic system has. Um, Okay, maybe this bit section here. The sympathetic system. So we said that the cerebral spinal system is the organ of the conscious mind. The sympathetic system is the organ of the subconscious mind. The sympathetic system has its center in a ganglionic mass at the back of the stomach, known as the solar plexus. When we say solar plexus, meaning you have to remember that we're talking about a literal sun. After we have a sun inside of us, or a burning taking place inside. Let's go ahead, Zamaat. Yes. Uh, okay, Zamaat, Zamaat, Zamaat. Because we want to share what you have to say to the uh, listener. Hello. Hello, Rahul. Uh, <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Talking about he's um saying we've got sun in us, right? Yeah, inside of us, right? Ain't it funny that the word sun, right, backwards. Is in us and US. And us, yeah. Yeah, in us. Is, is and that, us yeah, yeah, is that by design or like what's going on? Because actually spelling out some backwards says in us. In us, yeah. That's uh yeah, yeah. So you just I just learned something now, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, for that moment in time, I was, I was like you all a student, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. You know, all the times it's sun, 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 oh, no, the end oh. us. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the English language is a very ambiguous language, you see. But you're 100 percent right. We're the ones with the sun heat genes. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah, no, I just clocked the sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, wow. you, you, we just clocked him out. You, you just clocked, clocked him out. You know what I mean? See? Um, Zamar, did you want, want to take some more questions from Zoom? Oh, sure, yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. So um, I think I think a lot of the problem and blockage is the fact that a lot of us worry about who to pray to or who is God or who do we call on for protection? But if we focus on ourselves and take time to talk to ourselves and heal our trauma, we will begin to realize that the power lies within and not without. 
working on self will fill in every blank or unlock all the doors we need. So, well, that was more of a statement, but a good one at that. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, right, this is my last question. I'm looking for a healer from our group to help me with some healing because someone tried to take my life using bad energy and I have been trying to get healing for the last 20 years so could I get information on one of your healers and also someone to do a reading on me as well let me know if you need my email address etc wow I, I I personally don't know any healers but what we can recommend um the uh, person who wrote that is Until that time arrives when somebody comes into your life to heal you, what we do say is that Wu Sabat is the healing and the cure. I was going to read something. This is what is read in one of our chants. This particular chant is called. Um, pass, pass, will I can read a line no. to help you. Let's find here. Right, this is what it says here. It's right here. This is one of our charts. We say, Pass, will part of the truth and the way, and it reads this. Stop here. It reads, Panin Misfarakawun, Pasawu Pupataro. This book is the truth and the way. It was sent down for you all from the Cyrus and Orion as a guidance and a healing. Hear that? The math. The doctrine of Wu Sabad, it not only is a guidance, it's also a healing. From your all, where's it from? From your all's ancestors and overseers. Return to yourselves. Accept what is you all's, yours, the truth and the way, the guidance and the healing. Remember that the first step is inward. The first journey is inward. So we do recommend, let me said earlier on in the Pyramid chant, those tones, R E U. The R E U, he said many times, is the R is Banadaru, the E is the feminine forces, the U is the masculine forces. So we be chanting R E U, R E U. We are re realigning ourselves to ourselves. We are aligning our physical to our non-physical. Or we are aligning the conscious to our subconscious. We are aligning the outer world to the inner world and the inner world back to the outer world. The forces are more potent in the outer world, in the inner world, than it is in the outer world. Because everything starts from the inside out. Then it goes back inwards. So, the, so it's like a spiral in and a spiral out. The journey is twofold. Okay. Or we said earlier on, we live in two worlds simultaneously. Okay. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. I just want to read an excerpt here. Some of Newman Knighton has written it in the uh, chat on Clubhouse. It is from this is coming from the part of conscious being. And it reads six. So also is heaven and hell, up and down, 
So many times when one speaks of heaven or talking point, the word heaven is really haven, a harbor or refuge and can be outside your being to your innermost being inside. So heaven and hell is both external and internal. Okay, not as how or the means or the use the word is haven at a, a harbor or a docking point or or a, a refuge. Okay, so meaning that we can seek. Uh, consolence or um, comfort when we direct our energies inside outward. However, there's the, it goes back to this word a shock, love and unity. Uh, when it's like this, the word is called synergy. So I'll just give you back the um, definition. The word synergy is when two or more forces combine to produce an outcome or a result greater than if done individually. So when it said, our strength lies in our unity, they're talking about synergy. The more of us unify together, the greater the result or the greater the outcome. So in the case of the sister, or, or the person who wrote that, or the brother who wrote that, except saying that um, they are seeking a healing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In the meantime, take the journey inward, because what will happen is, as we are taking that journey inward, as we doing a, doing a basic chance, are you all or we doing any of the chance, as um, any of the chance, what we are doing is, as we said before, focus attention on that heart seat. That is an electromagnetic seat. As we focus the attention on this seat, it will radiate outward and the forces of nature will attach itself to those and the agreeable forces will start emanating to the individual and it will radiate back out. See, so focus on the cause or and it will, the cause or this is what I'm doing to create an effect in the positive. Hold on. So I hope that helps. So it's got, it's got a question from her seed. 432. What does it mean when one is less physically attached to this plane but feels spiritually guided? Right, yeah. Um what it is is that we cannot be it's like this. Be in this world, but not of it. You heard that? We heard that saying many times. Be in this world, but not of it. So, meaning that we should have it is our divine right to have the best that life has to offer. See, the best. And whatever condition we are in is a necessary condition for us to learn from. Hold on. Whether it's a mistake or not, it's something for us to learn from. We have, we, we're here to experience. That's why we're on this physical plane to experience. So the master says something like this do not become. If we detach ourselves from the physical and only want to focus on the spiritual, there's an imbalance. If we attach ourselves to the physical and not to the spiritual, it is there is an imbalance. So what they create, what they refer to as harmony with both worlds. Both worlds are necessary. The physical world and the spiritual world is a necessary component for us to learn and grow from. We came from the etheric realm to this physical realm for us to learn and grow and then make that return journey back into the state of supreme bliss or embarrassment. But it's, this is a necessary realm. So what does it mean when one is left to be attached to this plane but feels spiritually or spiritually guided? Uh, what, what that also means also is that this, these are your ancestors who are guiding you. See, we all have our ancestors who are guiding us. Now, for us to 
in order for us to be more attuned or to fine tune ourselves to those internal voices, we have to uh, be in a state of silence periodically throughout the day. You see, um, that way we will. I was about to say it's like like this. How can we develop those powers of mental telepathy if there's so much audio around us? If there's so much you know, distractions around us. Mm -hmm. So we could take the time out to say, you know, let me take this part time out uh, as a period of silence. And during that silence, as we said before, focus on your breathing, on your chanting, but direct those energies of silence towards that heart center, mm -hmm. the most powerful center in the body. Okay, more powerful than the brain. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, but but when you feel spiritually guided, that, that is the right feeling to feel. But do not attach yourself from the physical world in totality. I do not, because the master said it like this. If you immerse yourself totally in the spiritual realm, you can become quite depressed in the physical world when you see the amount of and uh adversity that's going on in the world you see but experience is necessary so we need to we need the physical just as we much we need the spiritual we need the spiritual just as much as we need the physical exercise and correct diet helps to strengthen not only the physical but the spiritual so I look at health and diet as physical foods to help the physical body and the spiritual body because of the vitality that's within the food and your spiritual practices be it breathing chanting etc etc help to nourish the spiritual added vitality to the physical as well so both of them are interrelated just like you have the yin and yang symbol of duality okay young master What's your name, young master? Okay. Sorry. Sorry, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> As before, when you were speaking about religion and us praying to carnivorous beings, and then now you just spoke about spirit, like spirituality and health physically linking with each other. Does us eating meat um, link into carnivorous activities and affect our spirituality? Right, 100%. Uh, yeah, um, not carnivorous, but like, you know, eat. we say carnivorous, not eat other human beings. But what it is is that the foods we eat has what the food has distinct energies within inside of them, you see. And when we talk about eating meat, our body has not been engineered to eat meat. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because, um, we have what's referred to as an elementary canal. When we eat food, the toxins, etc., go through into the elementary canal. Our elementary canal is, is so long, meaning that the poisons uh, remain in the body for an, more over an extended period of time. We do not have the necessary enzymes within our body to break down the food in totality. You see? So uh, we do not, our digestive system is not really molded around it's not molded around the, the assimilation or the digestion or the eating of meat you see now if a person's been a meat eater for all their life we don't say get get out of meat what we say is that some that we should intravenously reduce from eating meat then you perhaps go on to i was about to say chicken but that just sounds as bad fish that has less blood and uh, elevate yourself onto um, eating fruit and veg. Um, something about fish, uh, meat. Yeah, meat, go back to meat. Yeah, what it, see, when we eat meat, especially the red meat, we're talking about the blood that's within the meat. And when the animal's being killed, the, uh, the fear or the trauma is imbued in that meat that we eat. So don't eat meat. <laughs> they put in a rap song. They? <laughs> they don't eat really, you know, there's more 
disadvantages to eating meat and benefits and benefits you see uh, uh someone says here i hope that answers your question wait so Clark, have, have, you, have you have you been tricked to believe that eating meat gives us that like, more protein and stuff i see a lot of people in the gym mm -hmm. they, 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 they say oh yeah we need protein to get yeah, yeah. So, i see people with a big plastic coming to the gym with big plastic bowl uh steak or whatever yeah, yeah. steak or meat well, 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 now that's a very good. This is this is a question or uh, a statement that's made all the time, and there's people. This is what people, especially in the conscious community, uh, you know, yeah, no, brothers who are or sisters who are, who are um, dietitians in the, the black community. They say this: No matter how much meat a man needs, can you, can you take on a gorilla? No, gorilla don't eat beef. Gorilla eats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They what they eat? They eat full of veg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They eat all the fruit and all the veg. They eat the whole banana in the skin. Look how powerful they are. You think man could do an arm wrestle with a gorilla? I man could take on take on a sheep. <laughs> what do you see? And you notice something like this in the animal kingdom. The carnivorous animals they always attack an animal that is a vegetarian. They eat, eat grass. Mm -hmm. You know they always eat grass. Why? Because that animal, the animal, be it the the, uh, the gazelle or whatever, or or, or the, uh, the zebra, they have a high water content. So, but you, you see, so you so, so a carnivorous animal don't eat another carnivorous carnivorous animal. They may they may say, well, I saw a thing on wildlife where 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 the the. Uh, um, Tiger ate the, the hyena, but they will look first at the, the the animal, the gazelle or the zebra or whatever that eats grass because of the high water content that's contained within their body. You see? So our body, we talk about nutrition, our body is uh, the planet is 70% water. Our body is 70%, 75% water. Doesn't it stand? To reason that the ratio of food that we should be eating should be seventy five percent water based. How much water is there in a in a sterile steak? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much time do you have to chew that before it goes down? You know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but here this though, when you talk about meat, you now we know as black people we like to cook the meat good and proper. Mm -hmm. But those of you who eat the meat, we like mm -hmm. we like to we like to cook meat. You no, know, you know. But here this. Well, your bedrooms who eat meat, you say to them, Do you eat it raw with the blood dripping? No, nah, they say, You're crazy. I'll cook that thing good and proper. Well, the nutrients is in the blood. So, really, you want the full nutrient from your meat or the steak that you're eating, you've got to eat it as raw as you can with the blood dripping. Because you know, you see um, Jeremy Oliver, the man, them, uh, or Ramsey when he's cooking the meat, you know, you know they cook this, you know. Just keep it warm, just warm. You need to warm up. That's it. I need to not succulent, ready. That's how you meant to eat the meat. Because the nutrients is in the blood. So when we black my people, we put we like to roast the thing. What makes the meat taste nice and take well, the gift of the, what gives the meat its taste? It's the blood. Once you get once you extract all the blood, the food that the that meat don't taste the same. But what we do, we put we put seasoning, seasoning, yeah. and we want yeah. roast potatoes and whatever, whatever, uh, to go around it. I mean, wash it down with a Guinness punch, right? You know, but it's the um, it's the blood that gives the food the taste, and it, and the nutrients. You know, a funny one. I was talking to somebody the other day about that, and I was saying people always say how much they like this meat and that meat and so on and so forth. But I guarantee you, if you eat that meat with no seasoning on it, you would spit out quicker than you breathe. So the reality of it is, is what you actually like is the seasonings, and the seasonings are plant based. So the reality of it is, is you don't like meat. You like the seasoning, the plant based seasonings that are put onto the meat. So. In reality, it's almost like your DNA is really calling you back to plant-based foods and plant-based things because that's what you're actually liking when you're eating that meat. Yeah. Um... Um, I just want oh, to yeah. something. Um, now I'm going to go back to 
my roots back in Africa when I was growing up. My grandmother said not to eat anything that has got blood on it. Yeah. So her food was only seafood with no blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the only thing she eats with vegetable. Yeah. That's the next, as taught by the master, the next level now would be eating foods that does not have parents or have eyes or teeth. That's the next level for those of us who want to aspire to reach the higher heights. Who wants to aspire to reach the higher heights? Everybody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, even though you have to down, but okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, you just, the man, he's a spokesperson for the man that scratches these. Oh, how high do you want to reach? Well, that's the next level. Go ahead. Also, I was watching something with my dad, and he was speaking about the negative impacts of eating um, meat, and he was speaking about how um, any food that you eat is cooked during the growth cycle. So when you eat plants, the nine-month process of it growing into edible food, is it being cooked? Hence why when you cook your food, you burn out the nutrients, and why we should only be eating veg and not meat. You're 100% right. Um, when we cook... Okay, let's say um, we cook any food, really. Uh, we, uh, we are, the word they use is denaturing the nutrients of the food. Um, we should be really be eating what was, what's referred to as sun-cooked foods, food that has been cooked by of the sun. When we're drinking drinks, we see we drink at room temperature, basically water. So just broke something here. But yeah, you're 100% right. Is that, but you know, again, uh, these things, if you've been eating meat for a long time, these are things that must, if you want to take it out of your diet, it must be done intravenously, not BAM! It's like, you, you know, like somebody's eating, eating, eating a, um, a finger of fudge or a Twix or whatever, right? You know, eating a lot of sweets, and all of a sudden, BAM! You cut out eating sweets. Then, two weeks down the line, your body's craving for the for the for the for the, for the, for the snicker bar or the or, or the or the, the, the bounty bar, and before you know it, right, you got a bag. You buy you go to the pound shop. You buy a stack of stack of the biscuits and whatever, whatever. To, you, know, you want that you want that craving again. So like everything else, it's uh, it's, it should be done intravenously. One thing that also helps is. Knowing when to eat food, there's a time when we should be eating food, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a it's in cycle. We should we should be um, eating food roughly from about twelve noon to about eight pm. Yeah. In between that time, we can eat water based foods. Mm -hmm. Really, when you wake up in the morning, we should really be drinking water or we'll eat water based foods. Um, after because why? Okay, so we. Between 12 noon to 8 p.m., let's say that recommended time, yeah, they call it the they call it the appropriation cycle. The assimilation cycle means it's from 8 to about 4 a.m. 8 p.m. to 4, 4 a.m. is what's referred to as the assimilation cycle when the food is now being assimilated or digested within our being. And from 4 a.m. until 12 noon, another eight hours, because you know these are eight hour periods, it's, it's called the elimination cycle when the body is getting rid of the food that we ate previously. Okay, so if you want to eat something, you know, solid food, whatever, if you start that from about eat food from say 12 noon, that in itself is a discipline and a fast. Fasting. So now they call it also the circadian rhythm as well, at different terms. They call it, um, okay. So we have appropriation, we're eating food, the assimilation when the food is being digested, and we have the elimination food when the food is being expelled from the body. Okay. So this is a cycle. Okay. So <clears throat> once we start working with the cycles of natural nature, then we become in tune with the cycles of natural nature and with each other, okay? Can I say something? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, it's just that when you, you were talking about the um, unity of um, 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 Black people, you know, Africans coming together and unifying, and we were talking about ancestors, you know, what I've noticed is that that unifying with the ancestors within, you know, some of us here, like you were talking about different voices and stuff, but all I've learned is about practicing, 
because the first time I heard a voice from my ancestors when I was five years old telling me to do something and some of us get scared of hearing that voice and doing it but the more you practice and listen and do it the easier it gets and you have more confidence because you're having unifying with your ancestors within as well as unifying with your ancestors outside and the second thing when you're talking about food I don't call them parasites I call them celestial beings because we're all connected to the celestial beings the parasites inside of us because I used to be a teacher of biology and those um, parasites also are sentient they, you can hear them they can hear you so what I found when I was eating meat and trying to stop eating meat was talking to the celestial beings parasites with, within you because they're also connected to your ancestors and when you speak to them they will help you choose the food or desire foods that are good for you rather desire foods that are bad for you and the more you have a communion because what I've found that the whole thing about what we're talking about is relationship relationship with our ancestors that are alive relationship with our ancestors that are dead relationship with the ancestors within the more we commune which is relationship with those inside of us we get more easier to direct us like you were saying earlier on in the right path that we are going that's why I found that's worked for me yeah uh you're 100 percent right uh we have I like you. I use the word parasite because you use that term. Agreeable and disagreeable. Mm -hmm. And they have intelligence as well. Mm -hmm. They know uh, that when a certain food has not been taken into the body, they when they die off, they secrete poisons in our body. You see. And um, but they have intelligence and they are the ones who send thoughts in our head to eat this or to eat that see so you're 100 percent right samalta when we made that community as you said the communication is inward and outward so the, when you you just you said something about that which i think is very very uh, pertinent is communicating with even or the parasites within inside of us so when we are communicating to our ancestors or with all the deities that have been inside of us, we are communi communicating with the whole of our body because our internal organs is, I like the word you use, sentient or has intelligence. You see, every part of our organ has intelligence. And if it's lacking in nutrients, it will send messages to the brain or uh, or we said the cerebral spinal system uh, to extract this nutrient from this other organ to maintain its integrity. So that's why we eat certain foods that's not conducive to our being. A particular organ may need more nutrients than another organ and will seek this other organ to extract nutrients to, for, to maintain its integrity or its health or its longevity. So now this part of the body becomes deficient and that because it's become deficient that now attacks another part of the body so what they do what the physical doctors do and human being doctors do what do you call them the doctors do i'll take this tablet and uh, to cure you of this ailment but you take this tablet but it does it affects this other organ so you need to take another tablet to cure that organ but you take this tablet now it affects another organ i could talk when i'm back yeah everything's falling apart <laughs> So, um, uh, but you're hundred percent right. There are we have we have uh, bacteria or uh, germs and viruses. There are certain vi bacteria or parasites that is they call it. Um, is it what these parasites or uh, uh, you know they, they take these probiotic drinks etc. Et there's certain uh, uh, how do you call it? At least with parasites within our yeah. body, bacteria, what do you call them? Bacteria that within our body that is beneficial. Mm -hmm. And you have those that are not beneficial, you see. So, and some of them are cancerous. That's why people talk about when a person suffers from cancer and they have chemotherapy, the, the chem or chemical therapy, what it's doing is it's killing the good and bad bacteria within the body, you see. Or you say you, you can have a, a colon cleanse. That's why they say that after colon cleanse, uh, you should take certain uh, was it probiotic foods or meals 
to help replenish the good bacteria within the body. Yeah, you follow. So um, you're 100% right, Samalta, that we have agreeable and disagreeable entities within our being just by way of the food that we eat. You see, and somebody wrote here, um, I don't know what it says here. Um, so even though this is Sunra, but even so, even though I eat meat, I'm still remaining high vibrational. But I also only drink water. Yeah, it's good to drink uh, water. I do recommend that. Drink plenty of water. Yeah, we should be drinking a minimum of four of these a day, 500 mil. We should be drinking a minimum of four, four of these a day, so which is about two liters. Two, even two liters is minimum. What I do, my practice is I, I drink a pint in the morning, and by about nine, two hours later, I'm drinking, what do you say about that, brother? Is that, is that juice or water? <laughs> oh, <ooh. Yeah>. So, <laughs> I said, I kind of spurred on juice water. No, 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 no. Yeah, um, really, you're talking about every, to me, about every hour, every half hour, I've got to drink some fluids, especially with water. Um, you also got to drink, uh, also, if you put, you want to drink some type of juice, lemon juice or lime juice, or fresh juice, that you cut the thing, the lemon or whatever it is, and squeeze it in there, because it's got natural sugars. The juice, you, when you go to Sainsbury's, you buy a five pound bottle of juice, and uh, you think, it maybe says a hundred percent juice, fresh, but that you look at look at the expiration say, oh 2027 so <laughs> yeah, well, yeah well. go ahead young master yeah um there's also like a lot of things that i can tell about health change compared to people drinking like fizzy drinks to water me I, um, my dad was a vegan for 14 years so my whole upbringing i haven't been eating like bad things necessary or drinking fluids on my own the only thing that I have been drinking in my entire life is water. I don't consume any fizzy drinks at all. Mm. And I think, yeah, it does have like very good benefits. Yeah, so it's a very, very good practice. Mm. Say, say, very good. say thanks for your dad to bring you up that way. So bring, bring your dad to class one time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not saying I disagree with the drinking two litres of uh, water a day, but um, what I found out is... Um, Drinking too much water can be bad, even if it is two, uh, two liter, two bottles, well, two liters a day, especially during the um, the seasons of the year. So, you know, um, you know how like um, how can I explain? You know, like during when when the um, the moon is um, at its highest. I don't know how to explain when the moon is like. You know how the moon it, it it affects the tides, right? When it's at its highest point, right? That goes the same with um us humans. If we have to because you like you said we we're seventy percent, seventy-five percent made up seventy-five percent water. Mm. So if we're consuming too much water, right, and the moon is at its highest point, it's gonna affect us. Because if the moon can affect a whole ocean yeah. and move a whole ocean, then what do you think it's doing to us? Moving you as well? Yes, I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. Then, like, yeah, I, I, I hear what you're coming. Do you hear this? So, I have to find out for yourself. That effect, are you, is it, are you saying that effect is good or bad? Um. Oh, I thought it was a bad thing drinking too much. Like, not not saying not saying drink. No, it's a bad. I don't know. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, um, I'm just going off of what I know. So yeah. I, Do you know something? Because when, cause when at one time, what I noticed is that when when the moon was it was at its highest, and I was consuming water, a lot of water, like, I did feel shift. Yeah. But I'm not sure if it was a bad, good shift or, or a bad shift. You did, you did feel something. I felt something, yeah. yeah. Hear this though, you're 100% right. We shouldn't drink too much water. The reason for that is because, when I say, when I say too much water, too much, too much water, because it can, it can, uh, it can, when you go to the toilet, because more water you drink when you go to the toilet, 
it can eliminate a lot of nutrients within the body. So you've got to be so you've got to be careful of that. So you're right in that respect. But if you're saying you're drinking water and you, you could feel yourself being aligned with the moon, what you're saying to me, what I'm hearing is that you could feel yourself being aligned with the celestial bodies. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah, well, I, I, I thought it was a bad thing. Right? But then I was alive with the force of natural nature. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it's a good thing, bro. It's a good, it's a good thing. Um, how do we know when we're drinking too much water excessively? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. Um, right. Out, yeah, you, you find. Out, right, yeah. Yeah, um, what, what happens is, is that You know when you drink a lot of water and get that bloated feeling? Mm -hmm. That's when you should stop. Uh, don't drink too much water. You shouldn't get that bloated feeling. However, in saying that, that bloated feeling is an indication that the water that we are consuming is toxic, for lack of a better word, you know, because mm -hmm. um, we shouldn't get that feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, the word they use is structured water. It has a different structure than the regular water. That we're drinking. Uh, if you go down to, uh, if you live near the waterfalls or the nat waters come from, from the, uh, uh, not from the water, from if you go to Tanzania, yeah, what's that mountain there, Kilimanjaro? If you live, if you live at the near Kilimanjaro, that's natural spring water, and it has um, all the necessary uh, nutrients and minerals that's contained therein, and the water is can be easily assimilated. When they say structured water, what they mean is water that the cells of the body can assimilate, meaning it can the, the cells of the body can be hydrated. Hello? Um, so, but in saying that, um, drinking water is better than not drinking water or maybe stay hydration or dehydration. Go ahead. Also, I felt like I excessively drink water, I'd say, to an extent, because sometimes I do get that feeling. And my main reason being that was, do, as doing my own research, I've seen that we're electrified beings, and obviously water is a conductor of electricity. Uh, water is a conductor of electricity, and whilst drinking it, um, water to that extent, it made me feel better overall, and I thought that increased my health. Yeah, 100%. Right. Um, right. Water is a conductor of electricity, okay? So now, and also that our DNA rests in water and our the lot of the oxygen that we take in goes directly to the brains. So when we're drinking water, a lot of it is absorbed to the brain. So we should be drinking, not again, not overly excessive water. You know, so it's a very, very good practice to maintain, but not all that Wrong about someone. Um, what I want to say is that um, the body naturally has a gauge. Yeah. Okay, when we drink water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And the thing is that the reason why, like you said, some people have uh, sort of like um, bloated abdomen after drinking water. It's basically because the water which we have around us is polluted, okay? And if you compare the water we have here and the one we have back in Africa, it's completely different, okay? Because back in Africa, children could play all day, and once they are playing, they are sipping water. And this water, there's no treatment, okay? These are natural water, and they're quite very healthy. Mm. Okay, but uh, you no. Know, sometimes they show these pictures of uh, but if where I come from, that is completely different. There are streams clear, crystal clear, where they drink from. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What it, the thing is is that since we're here in the West, we have to do the best that we can, you know, and uh, or let's say take the best of the worst. I mean. That's the best we can. But in saying all that, even we have energy centers within our fingers, hold on, and and also our mind power. So when we are drinking water, we should imbue that water with the 
internal energies that we have contained with our bodies. So we should have a mind link to the food and waters that we're eating. Now, I think the master just said it like this. It's like this. Let's say, um, you had to, this is what the master just said many years ago. He said that you, you had the dinner table and mum makes the chicken, but you want mum's chicken. Mum's chicken, why is it mum's chicken taste better than your chicken? Uh, because there's something in, but the thing is, the same chicken cook, cooked from the same pot, etc. Et that ch mum's chicken has been imbued with, with her essence. The thing is, hear this now, the chicken that mum gives you on your dinner plate, since this, this is your plate, um, Ra, this is your plate, Omar Ra, this is your plate. Because it's his plate of food, he hasn't touched it yet. There's an immediate connection there. But when he but the, but when he tastes his mum's chicken, it tastes different than his chicken. You see? So we do have the power to imbue the food and the drink, well, especially water, that we're eating by our own essence. That's why when you eat a bar of chocolate or you're eating crisp, you notice you're using your hands. You are making a connection to the pack of crisp with your body. That's why we, we love to eat a whole crust crisp. Who eat, not that you're eating chips, you eat chips with your hand. Who, who eats chips with knife and fork, you know, unless you go to a restaurant, but you know. So there's a, we make a mind link to the foods and drinks we drink in. So hope that helps. So yeah, Ramadan Zaman. Um, yeah, I've been listening to the class during a very good class. Um, I just wanted to touch on the water thing. Um, people think that when we say drink two liters of water or even a gallon, because really you have to drink as much as you can, you're not drinking all of that amount at the same time. That's correct, yeah. You're sipping it throughout. So I'm not sure who was asking the question, but they were saying that you can take in too much water. Mm. That's because a lot of people, when they drink, they don't time it like you were saying, a glass every hour mm. or sipping water throughout. Yeah. They will not drink for a long time, get dehydrated, and then they will drink a lot of water at once. That's when it's dangerous when you're drinking too much like mm. at once. So I just kind of wanted to touch on that. And the other thing you said is about connection with the food. And that's why back home in Africa, we eat with our hands. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Well, that's what we get that. So yeah. We yeah. Um, welcome, so um, yes, um, I, when I look at myself, I would drink, well, like in the morning before I go to work, I would drink a pint of water. Uh, this is what I do. Uh, I put about half a tablespoon of salt, uh, it's called Celtic salt, in the water, I would drink it with that. The reason why I use Celtic salt, because it's got more minerals than Himalayan salt. You shouldn't really drink, um, you know the salt you put on your chips between <laughs> the table, so you see me taking that stuff, poison. Uh, but Himalayan salt or black salt, or I take uh, Celtic salt. Celtic salt has about uh, 90, I think it's 82 or 92 minerals. You see, so when you take that to, uh, and you're drinking it, it's easily absorbable to the cells of the body. Remember, we drink to, to uh, hydrate the cells, okay, and also the brain. And uh, uh, Sir Ken says, yeah, we should drink, uh, it's recommended to drink in sips. And I find that, let's say uh, I drink a glass of water, say 7 a.m. in the morning, by about 9 o'clock, I drink, say, a bottle of this, I, uh, I can feel the water going right through my body. That lets me know. That To me, that's an indication that my body is in a state of hydration. I'm just at work, you know, uh, but that's me. that lets me know that my body is in a state of hydration. And drinking uh, 500 mil would hydrate me. And then throughout the day, that's what I'll be doing. Yeah, but like his brother said, about half a, half a bottle. Like the goal is yeah, about four of these, which is about two liters, that minimal. Minimal, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and not only that, the master put a scroll out called Purity and Neatness. And he's, like the brother was saying here about the tides of the water, there's a time when we should be drinking water. I think it starts about 9.30 or something like that. But there is a time frame when we should be drinking water. Okay. But throughout the day, to avoid 
by the time we, if we are hydrated, means we, oh, sorry, when we are dehydrated, uh, a bit too late. Let's say too late, we should reach that stage of dehydration. Or because it's winter, I'm not going to drink much water as I did in the summer. You know what I mean? Really, we should maintain that same practice uh, throughout all the seasons. It's like some if you get warm water, just warm, because I've been cold here. Yeah. Instead of cold water. Yeah. But that's why the water gets cold naturally. Yeah. So when you keep it out, like people drink tea or coffee, they don't stir up the warm water. So that's what I want to do in winter. Take a sip of warm water. Yeah. Cold. Yeah, that's what the, um, we room temperature water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she take room temperature water. That's about water. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> um, two questions in one. Um, I was wearing the wet. Um, yeah, two questions in one. Um, because we're in the West, as you say, we're trying to do the best while we're living here. Um, what I don't know if it's Celtic salt, which is going to be the answer to it, but what is a good ingredient to add to the water? To um, okay, we're going to the next one. Um, you said seven percent water inside the body, seven percent water, 70, yeah. but it's so almost 70 percent. Okay, yeah. strong percentage of water. Yeah, that's my body. Mm. Isn't it like some type of J fluids or something like that? That's my body. Uh, I can't remember what that's for me, but even though it's the same percent, isn't it? Um, not exactly water, water. Right. Um, it's not exactly, not, not exactly like the ocean, coming out of the ocean, is it? Yeah. In our body. Yeah. What, what so that's it? what leads me to the next question. What's a good ingredient to keep that good, uh, that, that, that whatever ingredient is that makes the part of our water in our body? It's not exactly water, but I'm like saying that. Yeah, what what it is it? It is you talk about you talk about water, you're talking about um you are talking about water, but the water really should be what's referred to as structured water, meaning the molecular structure is such that it can be easily absorbed by the cells and the brain. Now, the structure of water, you get that in things like uh, coconut water, watermelon, any water-based foods of fruits and vegetables have that which is referred to as structured water that the cells can that is it is, it is easily absorbable by the cells and the brain okay that's what we call it structured water uh we do have other fluids such as blood um, and 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 other fluids such as certain hormones that release sorry, you know, Plasma. Yeah, plasma, you have the plasma, the blood plasma, which is a water, uh, which is a fluid. So you have different other fluids, but all they are all predicated upon water. You see, with hydrogen being the most abundant element in the universe, and even the sun has water. So would you say a good ingredient would be hydrogen in the water? Hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, water is composed of hydrogen. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. can get a higher. Okay. Cool. I yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but when you but when you say I hear what you're saying, but that is structured. What are you talking about? The extra hydrogen, the extra hydrogen ion. I think it's H3O2, structured water. I think it's H3O2. That is structured water that has a, a, a extra hydrogen ion attached to it. A high extra hydrogen ion attached to it, so that when we are drinking the water, it is easily absorbable. That's the reason why we drink water. Really, is is for cellular absorption. You follow? Okay. And also for the nutrients, but that's why it's recommended um, to drink. That's why I put uh, the Celtic salt in my water for the nutrients that can as that is transportable by way of the water. You see, and when we eat in fruit and veg, that is water based. It also has nutrients as well within inside of that as well. That's easily absorbable. And not only that, when we um, it's like this: when we eat solid food uh, and we chew it. It eventually liquefies anyway, you see. So we are extracting the fluid or the, the fluid from the food that we're eating and that which is no longer uh, usable by the body, it gets eliminated, okay? So um, it's all, yeah, so... Because that's what happens when we eat food. We are actually um, liquidizing the food that we eat. But here it is, though. We have, we have a spoonful of fork full of food, right? And as soon as that fork goes in our mouth, we were looking for the next piece of food. 
but it's still there in the mouth. And then you, oh, 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 oh. But what it is is that really we should be taking, uh, we should be taking, eat it slowly. Take a spoonful of or a spoonful of food is, is a lot. So if you take a fork, it's not, it's not that much. And when you use your hands, that's that is the right amount. The right when you use your hands to eat, that's the right amount of food you should be taking at a time. And you should eat it and chew it until there's no more food left. Then take the next, the next, uh, the next spoonful or spoonful or handful of food. Okay. And some people they're too greedy. No, the food's not they're not they're not getting out quickly. They just scoop it up like this. That's what we're not being used to eating. eating food. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so but yeah. So these are, that in itself is a discipline to eat food until it's out of your mouth, all gone, gone downstairs. And take, take the next step. By that time you finish. By the time you'd be lucky if you. Right. You realize, you know what they say? It's kind of since last class. That the past time told me that size, isn't it? So I'm, but we want to eat food. What they, what they call that term, uh, for lack of a better word, they call it niggeritis. Eat and sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, you eat the food. You should charge the bell. Or I had to sit down. You know, <laughs> well, you could do sleep. That's what, that's what, one, that's what, the, the other tiger and the lion, after eating food, they have to go to sleep. I mean, so that's what we do. It's like also called niggeritis. Yeah, that's what they call it. That's it. <laughs> and eat, and eat and sleep. Eat and sleep. You can't do no more work. You know, you go, you go to the, you go to the uh, Western and take away whatever of the Ghanaian takeaway and give it this, give it that. You know, and see, even when you got work, like, why oh, I can't even move. You know, I mean, you know, you have to lift the um, the the, the pile of bricks, right? You can, I don't man do it in Ramadan anymore. Anyway, but something else. I want to say something about. Um, yeah, one more question. Um, What's the good container to put water in? Yeah, hey, what they say, what they say is glass. Glass. Yeah, glass say, um, but a good one is, is using uh, copper. Um, copper. Um, container. Container as well for water as well. Okay, yeah. Because it's, uh, it's more durable. It's it? electricity or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they say a glass or the brother says copper. You find that in actually in in if you look in the kitchen in any top notch restaurant, they use copper pots. Yeah, yeah copper pots. Yeah. That, that is not even that's long pots or anything like that. Lot, lot of them they use copper pots. Yeah. So the best container is is uh, is glass container. Guess what? I use glass container when I'm drinking water anyway. I'm doing the work the outside of work and hours. I used I know yeah, but uh, yeah, do the best you can, but yeah, but water is the best. But the glass container is the best. Well, yeah, so um, I just wanted to also add what you're saying about the chewing because mm. people don't chew their food, they cut and swallow, and and that's why it gets big chunks going down and it takes a long time for it to digest. And the energy that your body's supposed to be using for other things like the mental energy is then used up in trying to digest that food. That's where the nicolaitis comes from. Yeah. You just drink because all your energy is being drawn to your stomach mm. to digest the food. Yeah, and it's good you mentioned that somehow because um, that's why when we are studying, we shouldn't be eating. The master, the master said, the master doesn't, doesn't say, doesn't say, but we should be eating and studying. You see, so uh, we really. In order to help us assimilate more information, more knowledge, we should take sips of water. That helps to assimilate, you know, as you're drinking, you're studying, reading book. You can do that. So we should do that. That helps us in that in our retention and recall, ability to remember what we have read and ability to recall what we have read. Okay. Um, I just wanted to contribute about the water. The best water to take, if we can, again, Western world is alkaline water. Okay, which is in 9.5. Okay, which has all the nutrients, yeah. alkaline water. And you can get it through, if you get some filters in the tap. So you reduce the chalk essence in the taps, yeah. the water that comes from the tap. Because those pipes, Remember, they've been there years and years and years, yeah. haven't been changed, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you that water goes through all the houses in London, outside London, and everywhere, and the pipes have been there for you don't know how long. Mm -hmm. 
So the best thing for you, if you're drinking from the tap, you need to stop. You get those filters, they're not expensive. You can attach them to the tap and it filters the water. Even the water you use in making tea in your kettle. And that's why the kettles, you see that they have those white uh, chop here in them, even the tap heads, yeah? But if you get those filters, they're quite cheap. You can go online, even in Amazon, and you attach it to the tap, okay? Some of them can be changed every three months, some every six months, yeah? And it helps you. So when you're cooking, your cooking water is clean. Mm. The water you take is clean. Even your shower, you can have the one you put in your shower, mm. okay? Because if you don't change it, that bacteria coming from that shower, that pipe that has not been changed for you don't know how many years, yeah. it's gonna go into your skin, into your hair pulse, and it's gonna get into your body. So prevention is better than cure. Oh, that, oh, that, for that, Auntie. Right. Um, <clears throat> so these are little precautionary measures that we can take. I don't want to read something here. Um, this is by Yachanan. It says, I think it was an update that said we should drink water compared to our weight and drink our water in ounces to pounds we weigh. Can someone confirm? Anybody heard of that? That uh, it was said in an update that we should drink water compared to our body weight and drink our water in ounces to pounds we weigh. So if you weigh 140 pounds, say, you drink was it 140 ounces. Everybody heard that? Nobody heard that? Okay. Um, we'll have a question. What about solar gazing while chanting, meditating? Right. We talk about solar gazing. Um, many years ago, I read a book practice about solar gazing. Solar gazing basically means that you're looking at the staring at the sun, but it's like from sunrise to about 20. The reason why you stare at the sun at certain periods of the day, especially when the sun rises, uh, say that there's about a 20 minute window, you can, you, you can stare at the sun, or when the sun is about to set, uh, about 20 minutes before the sun set, it's agreeable to look at the sun. They call it solar gazing. The reason why they is allocated is advocated to uh, look at the sun. Say uh, from the sun rises, you've got about twenty minute window, and when the sun set, about twenty minute window before it sets. The reason why they got the, those two windows is because of the fact that the UV rays emitted from the sun is at its lowest point. Okay. So we shouldn't stare directly at the sun. They say, admit that you're looking at the sun like this, it'll burn your eye. And when you look at the sun, you do a solar gazing, it hits the pineal gland and activates the sense of the body, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's solar gazing. Uh, <clears throat> However, in saying that, when we are walking on a sunny day, even though we're not looking directly at the sun, we're still receiving the rays from the sun. So it's still imbuing us with its healing rays. Okay, it's still charging us up. So that's why we shouldn't, we shouldn't, um, we, we, sunglasses is not meant for us. Don't let be for real, we only wear sunglasses to look cool. We, look, we wear sunglasses to look cool. Um, yeah, Sometimes now and then, yeah, they look cool, isn't it? <laughs> so if any of you feel who wear sunglasses that you go to heaven, you better start thinking, you better dash away them glasses, mate. <laughs> okay, uh, before we finish, uh, somebody just said here, the contact, Nifer Atumre says, I just want, wanted to ask if drinking water out of a copper cup benefits the body at all and what they may be, and what they may be, what the benefits of drinking water from a, a copper pot it's really talking about the um, electrical conductivity from the pot. You see, um, if you've got a copper cup, how much is, how much is a copper cup? Okay. Fam, I hope that I've answered your all's questions best my ability. Um, we have to continue this class because there's plenty more I wanted to go into. There's plenty more to go into pertaining to 
the art and science to the release of Dr. Malachi Z. K. York, the ultimate reality to the Sabians. And we have to continue this next class. Uh, we have to remember, remind everybody that, um, that if you want to, you can always join the community, go into our website, uh, nashat, nashat at uk. is that the correct site? Yeah. Nashat at, what's it? I was chat.co.uk, go to the website there. Uh, you also go into uh, the Worldwide Sabian, United, 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 United Sabian Worldwide.com. Two sites to uh, you could uh, uh, align yourself with. We also recommend that, um, yeah, uh, we'd like to once again thank you all for attending this class. Remember, you all who made the class. We are all student teachers of the master teacher. Let us all together help propagate this right knowledge, right wisdom, and right understanding. So, next class, we'll continue this class. Next class, Akros U Wadu. Give and take care and farewell. Wadu. Wadu. Wadu.